Oh, it certainly has been a while since, well, frankly, I've done many videos on the OTR Essential channel, but specifically Q&A videos. New year, time to get back to an oldie but a goodie. I love doing the Q&A videos. I think you guys enjoy them too. I like the interaction. I like the ability to kind of freeform based off of the stuff that you guys sent in, sometimes as crazy as it is. Uh, but I asked for this go round uh, with the hashtag wrestling in 2023 and really trying to put the focus on as we're at the start of a new year, like let's talk about what we anticipate, what we expect, what we believe can happen in the year of wrestling to come. So did that, you guys sent out enough tweets. I'm actually gonna break this up into two separate videos. So you're watching part one here. You'll see part two follow up soon afterwards and make sure you check that one out as well when it drops on the channel. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and say before we start here, uh, just a reminder, if you wanna participate in future Q&A videos, you can uh, follow the show on Twitter at OTR Central is the Twitter handle and that's where I ask for the Q&A questions. Um, let's go ahead and get started. King James 97 asks, what do you hope for from wrestling in 2023? And do you have any video ideas, plans for the channel this year? As far as your second question, yes, I'm formulating. I'm not all the way there. I'm thinking about some different stuff. First things first in the month of January, I need to get back into the rhythm of actually doing some videos. That means things like Q and A's. That means reviewing Dynamite in SmackDown. Maybe doing a commentary video here and there. So like slowly easing my way back into it. Like that's the first step is just getting a little more consistent with the content. Uh, in terms of other ideas, um, other ideas in the works. And what do I hope from wrestling in 2023? That there's actually enough there to keep me interested the entire year. And enough that absolutely sucks that I could also rant about throughout the course of the year. At the NXT Gen Hero, what upcoming men or women would you like to win a championship this year? Both in the WWE and AEW. Well, that's really vague. A championship, both companies. Um, I'd like to see if we're going AEW, and I think this first video, keep in mind, is going to have a little more of an AEW slant in terms of the questions. The second part of the weekly Q&A will have a very WWE slant to it. Um, so here I'll just focus on AEW. Men or women that would like to have won a championship this year? Uh, from the f women's side, I really haven't thought about it much, honestly. You know me, like Jay could just carry the belt in perpetuity and I'd be just fine with that. And honestly, I don't think about AEW's women's division that much because it's not very good. I don't really care who they make champion at this point. A lot of the content that they put out involving their women's division is trash. Um, as far as the men go, um, you know... I'd like to see Powerhouse Hobbs maybe carry the TNT title and get a decent run. Uh, it'd be nice in a different world to let Ricky Starks, you know, get the AEW world title. Uh, but there's only one man that deserves to be next in line for the title. And you've got to let the young lions roar! <laughs> The only undefeated man in AEW, I'm talking about the icon, Sting. CM Punk feared Sting so much that he picked up his ball and faked an injury and stayed home for a few months. MJF now fears Sting. Oh, he wants to go into business with Brian Danielson. Yeah, because he knows Danielson's going to job for him. Sting's a different animal. It should be Sting. And no bullshit, like, you could make a story out of that that could actually be very compelling for a company that needs to be able to tell some compelling stories. At Dalek of Chaos, what do you see as the best and worst thing that could happen to WWE in AEW in 2023? Um, the best thing that could happen for WWE is have somebody kind of come out of the woodwork work and really, really get over. 
Um, the worst thing that could happen is Triple H continue to book like all of his shows are NXT. Uh, for AEW, best and worst thing that could happen, best thing that could happen is that their television viewership gains and increases. The worst thing that could happen is that that viewership decreases. Um, at Hashira95, what four wrestlers do you want to see break out in 2023? Four wrestlers that I want to see break out in 2023. I'd really like to see a lot of shine and focus be put on Ricky Starks in AEW. Um, because I think he has it. So I would love to see him get the real opportunity to break out. But not the type of like Wardlow breakout where he breaks out until they forget how to feature and book him. And then he just goes downhill. Um, so definitely him. Uh... I'm trying to think. Honestly, I don't feel as prepared for that question as I should be. So I can't really answer it right now. At Andreas underscore Byron, what is your opinion on Josh Alexander? It looks like Impact Wrestling wants him to break the record of longest reigning heavyweight champion. Um, honestly, I have one question for you. Who the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. I don't care. That's a, about a company that's basically dead to me. I don't hate him. I wish him success, but eh, that, sh that shit isn't for me. So I don't care. There's your answer. At Midcarder J, who do you think will get a better push in the mid midcard, upper midcard seed? L.A. Knight or Wardlow? Uh, L.A. Knight, <laughs> honestly. Um, as we've seen... Wardlow's booking the past few months and shouldn't feel all that good about it. And then, how do you see Thunder Rosa's 2023 being? I don't know if it's going to be very relevant in terms of, like, AEW or other companies, honestly. I'd like it to be, but I don't know how relevant it's going to be. Couldn't tell you. Uh, at Kavachthi, do you think that Jericho and the Elite have too much power and influence in AEW and if they're actively detrimental to company growth? Uh, the answer to your question there is, yes, they likely have too much power and influence. Uh, yes, that can be detrimental to company growth, the growth of other talents. Um, however, at the end of the day, that is Tony Khan's fault. He's supposed to be the head mother effer in charge. If those guys are able to influence shit like that, that's not an elite problem. That is, that's not an EVP problem. That is a Tony Khan problem that only Tony Khan can solve. I wonder sometimes, though, if it's about more so like Tony Khan tries to take on too much and doesn't know how to effectively delegate. I don't know. I don't work closely with the man, but um, there's certainly indications that uh, the EVPs have too much sway here. Uh, no matter what they might try to say publicly. At Jamie the Ghoul, with he who shall not be named in AEW, how fast will Tony Khan be swindled into spending all of his money on gold bars? It's 2023, and we still have to be bothered with the Memphis mid-card piece of crap! That Dynamite review on Wednesday night will be a real whiz-banger! That's all I'm going to say. At the Mox Guy, do you think AEW has peaked? Ooh, man. Um... I want to say no. I want to believe that there are avenues and paths for growth for them. I, I I want to, but damn. I'll be nice and say I don't think they've truly peaked yet. But I don't think they're as far away from their peak as a lot of the harder core like I believe in Tony Khan. I believe in AEW. I believe in the elite fans are going to say that it is. I think it's a lot closer to its peak than a lot of people would want to accept. Right now, as I, as it stands, yeah. Like, they're pretty close to their peak. And now our featured question of the week calls comes from Abnor Joseph. And being the featured question of the week, uh, what does he get? Well, it means I'm going to follow him on Twitter 
and you guys should too. That's what we're talking about here. Has Vince McMahon's retirement hurt AEW? Part of AEW's identity was being an alternative to a Vince-led WWE, but things may be different now. On the surface, it seems like a very ridiculous assertion, right? Like, how could the guy that dominated professional wrestling for the better part of four decades retiring be a bad thing for AEW, the competition. I mean, on the surface, it seems ridiculous. Yet, I think there's an argument to be made here. I think there is. Because part of what made AEW AEW was they're not WWE. And part of what helped AEW in the, in the minds of like the hardcore AEW fans is that it's a way to thumb your nose at Vince. It's a way to rebel against Vince. It's a way to push back against Vince. Well, in, with certain respects, you're not doing that anymore. Now, of course, he's still vast majority shareholder. He's got like 80% of the company shares. Um, however, like Triple H's booking and style of shows under his creative leadership is more in line with like what the hardcore AEW fan base likes. So AEW becomes less of an alternative. It becomes less of an alternative with lower production values and uh, lower in terms of some of the accoutrements that you would associate with WWE production. Certainly doesn't have the same Kevin Dunn psycho camera cut problem, that's for damn sure. But I think you can make an argument, uh, Joseph, that yeah, AEW was hurt a little bit by Vince McMahon's retirement. Because the WWE may be still be viewed by people as evil, but it's not as much the evil empire when it's not Vince McMahon running it. And I compare it to the New York Yankees. There are a lot of people that still hate the New York Yankees. Always have and always will. But it's not the same without George Steinbrenner owning the Yankees. Like, that's who Vince was. You could say Steinbrenner is the Vince of Major League Baseball. Vince was the Steinbrenner of wrestling. It's just not the same. You can hate the Yankees, but it is not at that same level. It just isn't. Um, so yeah, I think I think you're right. Like there there is a little bit of a piece there. Now AEW has created some of their own problems, mind you, um, that they need to work through that have absolutely nothing to do with Vince. But I think in some fans' minds, like, yeah, it's... AEW might not feel as much of an alternative as it once did, and it doesn't feel as cool to rebel against God as it did to rebel against Vince. So there you have it. That was part one of this weekly Q&A. Thank you to all of you for submitting your questions. And Abnor Joseph got our question of the video. Twitter. Stay tuned for part two, which is coming up soon.